This happens all the time. I can't, I, I, I can't stand talking about it. It makes me sick to talk about this. But they, of course, were doing their whole performance at an abortion rights rally outside of the Supreme Court on July 19th. As I pull up the graphic to that, make sure you like this video, continue to share it, hit that subscription button, notifications, bell, and of course, please do support me at patreon.com slash Danny High Fong. Uh, that's the best way to support this work. Um, hard times out here. People have been unfortunately leaving, and I'm still trying to boost uh, my capacity to keep at my goal. So please do support. But back to the squad. So as the squad was doing this, as they were supporting war, as they were saying, yes, NATO, yes, we love you. We want more of you. We want more NATO members in an institution that's defunct and illegitimate and that has only caused the death and destruction of numerous societies and millions of people. Keep expanding NATO. That's what the squad was raising their fist for. And then they put on a performance. They put on a performance on July 19th. And I want to show you the video that everyone has been talking about. It's the video of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And Elon Omar also did this, but I'm not going to show both. It's okay. You get the picture. So Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was escorted by police. She was arrested along with this woman, along with others, along with other members of Congress. Arrested, yes. But check out, let's just put on the volume. Just check check out what she's doing. Sorry, check out what she's doing here. All right, so let me just put it on. Check it out. So I don't know if you could see from that video that not only were the police gently escorting AOC, the rest of the Congress members and that uh, other uh, person who was with AOC there, gently escorting them. I'm going to try to fast forward. You get a clear view of her hands because this was going around. And, and first here you see the, you know, there's a little bit of a performance here. She knows the cameras are on her. Smile for them. Get a good shot. You know, people are watching you. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So she put her hands behind her back as if she had cuffs or zip line or whatever, you know, or wire. You know, police don't just use cuffs, but um, there was nothing on her. Nothing here. Right. So she was being gently escorted. This was kind of, this this was um this was kind of premeditated. There were announcements that there probably would be arrests. They were blocking traffic. The Capitol Police knew it. This was more of a performance. I, I don't want to hear from people who've been in movement spaces, who have organized protests, who've been to protests, that this was somehow some kind of genuine, spontaneous thing and that the police were just cracking down. I've been to protests like that. I've seen protests like that. Uh, um, I've experienced that. That's not what happens. I've been arrested in my life before, not for political reasons, though. It was back when I was a kid. Um, I was uh, 11 years old. I was arrested before. That That's not how it goes. I was not treated like that. <laughs> I was stopped and frisked before. I was treated much worse when I was stopped and frisked when I was in high school. Um, um, much worse than this. Much worse. So... You get the picture here. She's pretending to have cuffs on. And the New York Post, I hate the New York Post. It's a it is, but I wanna I wanna show you what how she responded because uh, the New York Post uh, published her response. And I think her response is even more, I think, incredibly insulting than even just the act of the performance. The performance to me is just counterproductive. It creates a, a scene where none needed to exist. I don't. I am not opposed to the squad taking a firm position on abortion rights. I'm opposed to the fact that every time they take a 
firm position. It's always off the backs of very little activity that will amount to any real kind of change. Protesting outside of the Supreme Court is really not going to do anything. You are Congress people. You should be doing Congress people things and trying to uh, codify Roe v. Wade. Uh, but that should have happened years ago before the squad even existed. And they're not even willing to challenge the fact that the Democratic Party has done nothing about this. But I want to show you how she responded, right? In the New York Post, you know, it's a right-wing rag, but sometimes it does have good reporting, especially when they can report on those that they dislike, which is always the Democrats, right? Especially the squad. So here's what she said in response to being mocked about this. Putting your hands behind your back is best practice while detained, handcuffed or not, to avoid escalating charges like resisting arrest. So this is even more incredible. This to me makes me so angry because how many times have we seen real legitimate activist people be arrested and then have to are imprisoned without bail or with bail that's too high for them to meet? It takes a long time to meet it. People go broke trying to meet it. How many times have we seen people literally be assassinated for their political activity or imprisoned for life? To have AOC say that her actions, putting her hands behind her back, had political significance, that she was somehow allowing herself to be more safe and not, uh, and not get extra charges? Do we really – does she think we're stupid that she was going to be charged with anything? At all? Have you ever heard of the Capitol Police charging a congressperson with a crime? That to me is absolutely ridiculous that anyone could say that with a straight face. And this isn't even to mention the fact that she raised her fist. She raised her fist. I don't even have it up anymore. I could bring it back up maybe. She raised her fist. She raised her fist while she after she was being, uh, yeah. I'll bring it back up. I I want to prove to everyone that the record is clear. That Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and Elon Omar, they all did. They both did it. Raised their fist while they were being so called escorted away. So here she is again. I'm not even gonna turn the sound on again. Here she is. She's walking. She's walking. She's smiling. The camera's on her. You know, she's smiling. And there's the fist. There it is. Let's go back. Sorry about this. I don't I don't like to max screen this. There's the fist. There's the fist. She raised her fist. So how could she say that putting her hands behind her back would have prevented her from getting charges? Literally raising your fist as an ordinary person, a working class person, a black person, raising your fist while being apprehended is likely not just to get you a resisting arrest charge. It's also likely to get you beaten down, probably pretty bad too. So to me, it's just so insulting. This is beyond just this is not how anyone called progressive or socialist or leftist should be behaving. You shouldn't. You should know better. But when the cameras are on and your career is important and you're a Democrat, this is what you emphasize. You emphasize optics. The Democratic Party is almost principally about optics. It's about funneling and fueling a certain kind of optics to push down our throats, endless war, endless austerity, and absolutely nothing of progress for the masses of people, working class people. Just suffer more and suffer more. Black people, oppressed people all across this country and around the world are, are supposed to suffer more as a party that says they are dedicated to justice and to uh, Medicare for all and to health care, to jobs. They're supposed to be the ones who are dedicated to working people. They play it up all the time. The squad is the biggest now uh purveyors of this message because the establishment Democrats gave that up a long time ago. But the squad now says, oh no, we're actually for these principles. Then they do stuff like this. Then they do stuff like this where, yeah, you should be serious about Roe v. Wade, but you should be trying to either get rid of your party 
or do make some kind of concerted effort to help people understand that their so-called party that they voted for vote for every single election cycle actually has a lot of blame casted upon it when it comes to this issue alone. Democratic Party is no friend of women, of queer people, of trans people. They're not any friend. I was talking to a client about this recently because uh, they are suffering from a lot of confusion about this and, and a lot of stress about how there's a lot of ramped up attacks and rhetoric and possible legislative setbacks for uh, trans people. And there's a lot of confusion. And out here in New York, there's a lot of confusion about, okay, well, I got to get the Democrats in, right? It's kind of like the narrative we always hear. Got to fight with the Democrats, fight for them, give us, give them all of our support because we have to stop the evil thing coming. And it's a really tough negotiation because, you know, just talking, you just talk a little bit and you realize that most people understand that they're not going to get anything back anyway. They're just trying to stop the bad thing from coming. They're trying to stop the scary Republicans, knowing that the Democrats aren't actually there to support them. They're not actually going to push through any economic or any kind of policy at all that will benefit them. And that should give people real pause for this continuing suicidal political cycle that much of the left is on, where they just give Democrats support over and over and over again without question because they fear the Republicans. Fear of the Republicans is only going to get us more Republican-like policy, which is, in effect, Democratic Party policy because the two parties see eye to eye on most things. Actually, they see eye to eye on all of the material things that actually affect your life on a day-to-day -day basis while cosplaying concern about so-called social issues, uh, so-called what some people call cultural issues, really ideological issues. Because when we talk about the institutional policies, when we talk about how they wield power, well, on cultural issues, on racism and white supremacy and gender and all, they are, they are, they're all the same. Because things keep going the same direction. And the Democrats and the Republicans, especially the Democrats don't put up a fight, and the Republicans know that they can fight for what they want because their base, their base is fine with it. They're energized. But the Democratic Party base is a captive base. It's working class people. It's black people. It's oppressed people of various nationalities. It's LGBTQ people. You know, it's, it's people of all kinds of backgrounds that identify with a semblance of uh, 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 values toward justice and this tradition that somehow the Democratic Party has been the party that has represented civil rights, that has represented workers' rights, represented uh, uh, the rights of, of gay, trans, queer, etc. people. But... They don't, they, they don't do anything about it. They don't put up a fight. And then when they do fight, they're fighting for $840 billion for the U.S. military. They're fighting for NATO to expand. They're fighting for Finland and Sweden to become the catalysts of a third world war. That's what they're fighting for. They're not fighting for the issues they even pander to. So it's much worse than even you could imagine. Most people think it's just the Democratic Party is incompetent. They're negligent. Uh, they're hypocrites. No, it's worse than that. The Democratic Party is lying its way into mediocrity, and it's lying its way into dragging us into endless war, endless austerity, and the preservation of an empire that is coming apart at the seams. That's, what's, that's what they're doing.